South Carolina in the home white. South Carolina State in the red. And even on Hezekiah, number 22. Really good player. Very active inside. That's a nice drive. And that was a nice play by Kaichinus, the freshman of the week that we talked about to get the block. They just tried to come back and get that one. He was trying to get on both ends. There's head of the Kaya. Look at him square up. Got a good looking shot, doesn't he? Boy, that was pretty good. Pretty good defense by Kaichinus. One thing I like about him, Hezekiah really is very active. I mean, it's not just his ability to face up, but he's good with his back to the basket, too. South Carolina State, a man to man defense. What we expected to see. Watching Eric Smith handle the ball right there for South Carolina. He incurred the wrath of Frank Case yesterday. Yeah, he, 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 big time. Frank Martin, I mean, he's, he was all over him yesterday. He handled it pretty well, though. Nice turnaround by Jackson. I had a chance to see practice on Thursday. It, you better be able to take it verbally if you're going to play for Frank. Frank Martin is terrific. Look at Hezekiah. I mean, two baskets already. Two different looks. One on the right side of the jumper on the baseline. And that time, catch it, put it on the deck. Going up to the rim. He's a good-looking player, Larry. Transfer from Jacksonville Community College. Six eleven and two thirty-five is Hezekiah. No reluctance on the part of the Bulldogs pushing the ball. That's going to be a carry. Well, already you can hear Frank Martin. I mean, just a moment ago, just talking to Damian Leonard, you could hear him all the way across the court. Damian, are you going to help on the baseline? <laughs> South Carolina State goes to his own defense. So already Tim Carter showing us two different defenses to start this game. Wow, and that was a bullet pass from Jackson that Kaichin has had no chance to handle. That pressure extended by his defense in the half court. Palmer with a nice drive. Boy, that was a terrific play. He went right around Lakeem Jackson. 6'7 freshman from Somerville, South Carolina. Frank Martin has been considerably under the weather the last several days, and this start is not going to help. South Carolina's got numbers. Smith draws the contact. Let's go back and take a look. Nice maneuver down the right side. Lakeem Jackson just simply not able to keep up. Jackson's a guy that's lost about 10 pounds. So he's in much better shape. Leonard couldn't connect on the three off the inbound. Nice catch by Palmer. Boy, Frank Martin is just on the verge of just going crazy. Hezekiah with another basket. Dude. South Carolina State just flat beating the Gamecocks back down the court. Bulldogs again switching defenses. They're back to the man to man. Carolina trying to get it figured out before the league opener on Wednesday. And a push is going to be called against Louis Adams. There's a couple of things to like about what South Carolina has done so far in this season. As we take a look at Frank Martin over there, he is not a happy man. <laughs> he doesn't like much right now. I'll tell you what, practice yesterday, he was really struggling, just trying to maintain some enthusiasm out there. Kind of let his assistants do most of the work. You know, I, talk, I talked to him about that. He said that's the way that the guys he learned from did it. And he wants to give his assistants as much of an opportunity as he was given. And so he'll, he'll do that frequently. Good hustle by South Carolina coming up with that loose ball. Good pass inside. 
Couldn't handle it. Oh, what a terrific pass in there. Well, Daryl Palmer, not Palmer, but uh, on the other side, Keen Jackson just couldn't handle it. To say this has been a stumbling start for the Gamecocks would be an understatement. Second turnover. They've only made one field goal. And there's an offensive rebound. Radovic got it and put it back in. Luka Radovic, 6'9", 220 sophomore from Montenegro. The Notre Dame prep. Good grab inside by Jackson and a good follow back up. You know, I said this at the top of the show. This is a really good rebounding team for a club that's not really very big. No. But they are plenty active. Nice drive by Adams. And he got caught up in the air. And he'll be called for the foul. Lakeem Jackson staying with it. Getting the bucket to go. But the game got trail early. The rest of the team is two of five. This guy is a terrific basketball player. Came out of the junior college ranks. Averaging about 31 minutes a game, which shows you, despite that 6'11 frame, he's not getting himself in any foul trouble. It's out of Jacksonville, Florida. Went to Jacksonville Community College. Good size, too. For a guy 6'11", 235, he's very mobile. Came in the door and immediately had three straight double-double. Carolina with a steal. And the foul is going to be whistled against Patrick Myers, who just checked in. Good job defensively that time by Eric Smith to jump in and disrupt the offense on the other end for South Carolina State. First time we've had anybody at the free throw line today, and it's Brian Richardson, junior out of Wilson, South Carolina. He's also a guy, Dave, that's getting to the free throw line a lot more often this season than he did last year. The thing I like about him is that in the last four games, he's averaged 14 points a game. South Carolina third in the SEC in free throw shooting at 71%. They missed their first two. Kaichinus with another offensive rebound. Nice feed. Slauson goes up strong. And he'll have a chance to complete the three-point play. Go back and take a look again. Kind of a tough pass. There really wasn't much spacing right there. He's only about six feet away, but a good catch by Slauson. He's able to finish it off. Lawson has come off the bench in the last two after starting the first ten. And he's responded pretty well. Five offensive rebounds now for South Carolina. Good pressure that time of the game, Cox. Look at Louis Adams. Good push, good pass. Radovich short with that shot, but one of the smallest guys on the court. Myers at 6-2 gets the offensive board. Let's go back and take a look at Patrick Myers, a local product that actually grew up and played in Orangeburg, South Carolina. Ball almost hit him in the nose. <laughs> he couldn't avoid, the, avoid that rebound. Nice grab inside by the freshman. I think Tim Carter recruited some pretty good freshmen. This kid's one of them. Mm -hmm. Shaquille Mitchell, another one we'll probably see later on. South Carolina State was 0-16 in the MEAC last year as we see Hezekiah go to the bench. So Carter did what any coach would do, and that's turn that roster over. And he brought in nine new faces. He won five games total last year, and they've already won four this season. Give you some indication of how much better they are. Only played one conference game. They lost that one, but... Again, they played some money games to help their athletic department. 1-3-1 one, one zone now by South Carolina State. Well, Carter's absolutely changing it up on defense. It's the third different defense we have seen. Hold on. Nice, nice move. Really a nice job of reading the defense by Brian Richardson. A little bit of a breakdown by South Carolina State. You shouldn't be allowed to drive all the way from the elbow down inside for a layup against the zone. hand on the basketball it was Brent Williams who got a hand on it he's a guy that can make things happen as well let's go back and take a look at Brian Richardson look at this 
Nice crossover a little bit. He kind of stuttered it a little bit, moved to the right, went up and laid it in. Richardson got the start last time out against Presbyterian and responded with 16 points, five boards, and two assists. Nice move, Palmer. Drew the contact. And we've got a South Carolina injury underneath the basket. Limonis Kachavius just checked in, and he is in some pain I thought maybe he hit his wrist perhaps he just got hit south of the border Kevin cuts the right here trying to make a maneuver inside to try to block the ball he got a whole lot more body than he did the ball look he's I mean he's really hurting I mean he's squatting down there for these free throws I mean he's got two shots but I think he's trying to find some air somewhere, my friend. Tony Green trying to help him out a little bit there. Kind of like a good umpire helping a catcher out after he caught a foul ball. Palmer with his free throws now with four. Once again, South Carolina State changing defenses. Let it go. Let it go. Good switch that time. A good switch again. Richardson lost it that time. Here come the Bulldogs. Wow. Boy, Adams shot that ball. He got it up. And I mean way up over Lakeen Jackson. Really nice defensive trip for South Carolina State. Great execution on the break. Williams is fouled. Palmer got him. For South Carolina State, you got to be uh, feeling pretty good right now. I mean, coming out of the gate, we really have uh, shown more confidence than I think South Carolina has so far. Nice maneuver again, as I said, by Louis Adams. Actually called that foul on Toons, number one. Job on the offensive glass. That is the sixth offensive rebound so far for South Carolina. Akevicus really got it up and got it in quickly. Big man out there. It's going to get better and better, too, the freshman out of Lithuania. 6'11, 255 is Limonis Kachavius as at the other end, Toombs gets the roll. You mentioned it, Larry. It just seems that every trip, South Carolina State, get a little more comfortable, a little more aggressive. Pretty good idea to rest uh, Hezekiah. Give him a couple of minutes over there, put him back in. Tell you what, I wouldn't let him sit too long. No. Especially the way this team is playing. Good ball reversal. Look inside. Anything there? Nothing. And Palmer call for the reach way out top where that wasn't going to make any difference. Kaichinis checks back into the South Carolina lineup. Chavius goes to the bench. Carolina State is led by as many as eight. Nice catch. Come on. Just couldn't gather himself right there. Maybe got a little bump. A little. And nicely done. That's what you have to do if you're South Carolina. You got to convert on opportunities like that, and Williams did. Why shouldn't he? He's the best three-point shooter they've got at 48%. Toons in trouble. And the ball was 
knocked away from Hezekiah. Carolina on the break. Williams spotting up. Gamecocks back within four. Herrera, who's had a, a chronic hip problem, will be back for conference play later on. And there he is. And, of course, they've had other guys. Bruce Ellington, which we hope is going to join us in the second half, will also be back to play uh, this week. There he is. Of course, Ellington leading receiver on the Gamecock football team and caught that game-winning touchdown pass in the Outback Bowl. He will, in fact, be here the second half. Well, he's some receiver, isn't he? Well, he is. Saw Gathers over there as well. He's out. He uh, hurt a kneecap in the preseason, so he's probably not going to play at all this year. And then they've had an issue over the last week or so with Shea Page, transfer from Southern Miss, one of those graduate students. And after a meeting, he had missed the last two games, and after an on-campus meeting yesterday, it's decided that uh, he is done. And because of an academic issue, won't play anymore this year. So... Frank Martin really still trying to put these pieces together as we get ready to start league play. And it, and it isn't that they don't need those guys. I mean, all those guys are really good contributors, every one of them. Page was a leading SEC free throw shooter at 87%, and he won't be around for the rest of the year. Kaichin is short on that three. Carrera is a guy who's been a big energy guy for him. And, of course, Ellington can really run things and is one of the few proven performers in this league on this South Carolina team. He just wanted to rest a little bit, and it'll either be tomorrow or Monday when he begins practicing. Frank Martin said he's just amazed at how much he's been able to do going from football to basketball. Well, he's already played four. He has played four games already, but, uh, I mean, really hasn't gotten back into the swing of things. He had to leave to go play in the bowl games. You take a look at Michael Carrera right here. Almost 20 minutes per game. Just a little under 11 points, seven rebounds. This is a guy that really has lots of energy. Look at our State Farm player profile. A guy that's really vocal. He's just got one of those hip issues for anybody that's had plantar fasciitis sometimes it just flares up and they're just trying to spot him get him through the conference season how about that block by palmer the freshman for south carolina state take, take a look at this block there this is the freshman palmer a nice cut to the basket brent williams trying to lay it up and he was waiting on him the convergence of the defense you know oftentimes when you got a guy driving to the lane Everybody converges in the lane to keep anybody with a basketball out of there. Nice job by Palmer. And a nice job by the Bulldogs. You would think it would be the other way around, but they've taken a basketball right at South Carolina and have done a good job of getting themselves scoring opportunities at the free throw line. Shooting 58% coming out of that last time out. I'd say that's pretty good. Myers, one of those guys who can run all day. Three-time most valuable athlete on his high school's cross-country team. And a foul on the double team. Mitchell called for the foul. Shaquille Mitchell, another one of those talented freshmen, 6'4", 185, from Hollywood, South Carolina. I have to confess, I don't know where Hollywood, South Carolina is. I thought I knew every town in South Carolina. I was going to say, I wouldn't think there'd be too many in the SEC in general that you have not passed through at one time. Passed through or been escorted through. <laughs> I'll let that one stand. South Carolina State has done a pretty good job. We're halfway through the first half, and they're still leading. Boy, look at that execution. They get called for the offensive foul. Well, what a nice set play. It's a little out of control on the pass, and credit South Carolina with a rotation on defense. Good back cut. Good position by Brian Richardson. Watch him take the player control foul right there. Another turnover for South Carolina State. Trying to find an opening against this Bulldog defense. 
I tell you, they've done a pretty good job. I mean, they really made it tough on the guys with the ball. And also the one pass away, guys to receive. Nice play there. Good, good job by Slauson. R.J. Slauson with his second field goal. Almost at his points per game average. 4.7 per game. Boy, another nice play by Palmer. And Jackson went up and affected the shot just enough to keep Ezekiah from slamming it home. Well, it was a gorgeous pass inside. Palmer gave it to him, and Hezekiah just couldn't get up to the rim quickly enough. He knows he missed an opportunity right there. Mm -hmm. Control at the rim. You know what happened? He got up in the air and he thought he was going to have an open player to pass to, and nobody was open. Ezekiah, he thought was going to be open on the left side, the low block. South Carolina covered him up and he had nowhere to go but go to the basket. Almost cracked the glass on that shot. And pass inside. One of the things that South Carolina really struggled with is their turnovers. Oh, what a block. A little hustle play by Jackson as he got back again. Well, to keep Jackson catching up right there to get that block. Good defensive work right here. Watch Jackson come from behind. Knowing he's going to go to the other side with the reverse, he timed it perfectly. You know, he's a guy, Larry, that's always had some ability, but getting in that better shape allows him to get back and make a play like that. I think a surprise Patrick Myers. I thought he had a wide open layup. Lawson can't get it to go. And this time Jackson's going to get called for the foul. South Carolina and South Carolina State hooked up in a good one here in Columbia. And Slauson is the target right now. You can see that stare down right there. But trust me, it is being absorbed by everybody in that circle. <laughs> he is a little upset. He, he is just as apt, though, to express his happiness as he is his oh, frustration. No I, question. I, I saw him uh, one of the last trips down court, stood up and told one of his guys, said, my bad, my bad. I was watching him yesterday in practice as badly as he was feeling. I mean, he was all over his team for the things they were doing wrong. But when they did something well, he was up and he praised them. Shot won't go. And South Carolina State, once led by eight, they still hold that one-point lead. And it's been almost five minutes now since Tim Carter's club had a field goal. 12.41 on the clock. It's a combination of factors. I think South Carolina's defense has picked up, but I will say South Carolina State's had some opportunities they just weren't able to capitalize on. I believe I'd be calling Hezekiah's number if it were me. I think part of the fact that they haven't been able to score is that South Carolina started to mark their defense on this Jeff inside. Archenis with a nice play. Wide open layup that Jackson missed, but Kaichenis bails him out. South Carolina with a lead for the first time and now looking to extend it. Nice hustle by Smith. Got him an extra possession. Well, that was a really good play. You know, those are the kinds of things that coaches think about when they see something like that on the floor. Let's go back and take a look at Eric Smith right here. That ball is heading out of bounds. It would have been South Carolina State's ball. He saves it, gets it back in, and gets it in there to Keen Jackson, who's got a couple of free throws here. One hand. Wow. That is about an, un as an unusual free throw motion as I have seen in a while. Well, let me say this. He's shooting 30% from the free throw line. And if you watch that right there, it'll give an indication why it's 30%. Not even close on that shot. 
Well, sometimes when you're not doing well at the free throw stripe, you experiment. You, you have different ways of trying to do it. That would be out of the box. That would be out of the box, no question. Richardson's going to get called for the trip. This would be the uh, basketball equivalent of going to golf's belly putter. <laughs> you know what? He's got a nice follow through. I mean, it's right there. I would just use the other hand to balance the ball. That's one of the reasons why you put it up there. You just simply use it to balance it. You might expect to see somebody using that motion at the South Carolina State Fair. You know, oftentimes when you're growing up, and uh, that was good, you you have a tendency as you're growing up through high school and, and to, to sort of mimic or, or take somebody that you, you know was a great free throw shooter and try to use their style. Mm -hmm. There was a guy that I mimicked by the name of Bill Sharman mm -hmm. who played for the Boston Celtics. He ended up shooting about 90% for the Celtics in his career from the free throw line. I was much less than that. But still, you weren't bad now. Uh, that was about 73. Nice move by Mitchell. So do you care to guess who Lakeem Jackson was mimicking? I don't know who that would be. <laughs> Leonard off the curl. I'm telling you, one thing Frank Martin has got to like is every time a ball is on the offensive glass, Kaichinus is up there to get a hand on it, whether or not he pulls it down or not. He's already got four rebounds. There we go. Been a while since he scored. Mm -hmm. Got a bunch of it. Got three baskets in the first five minutes, and uh, just now got one with uh, about 540 left here in the first half. Matthew Hezekiah. Once again, South Carolina State changing defenses now. They're back in their regular man-to-man. -man. Smith trying to get this Carolina offense in gear. In and out, and there's Kaichinus again. Myers pulled it away from him. Hezekiah, four of six from the field. Leading score in the game with eight. Oh, that, that might have been a carry. Good pass inside. And they call Hezekiah for the double dribble. Despite that, though, Larry, you, you look at this young man, and, boy, he's got, a, I think, a big-time upside. He does. He's a junior, and we talked about it earlier, the fact that he came out of the junior college ranks, and he's pretty heavily recruited. He ended up going to South Carolina State. Well, the Bulldogs change defenses again. They're back in their 1-3-1. Don't really trap out of this. They just play position defense in their zone. That's what happens when you play position defense. You're going to leave good shooters open. Leonard got it to go. Second triple of the day for the Gamecocks. And now a steal. Nice kick out pass. Eric Smith getting it out there beyond the stripe. Nothing but the bottom of the net. You like guys who dribble the ball into the paint and have those kick out passes, particularly when you're standing wide open. Mm -hmm. Defenses always converge into the lane when people are dribble driving. Just get ready. Part of the problem I see in college, the college ranks today is when the guy goes in there, the guys on the perimeter aren't ready to shoot when the ball comes out of there. I never had that problem. When it comes out, it's going up. It's because you demanded it, that it come out. Oh, yeah. That's a lot of pull. <laughs> Three-pointer on the way. It won't go, and Palmer can't handle the tombs miss. Kept it alive and Kaichinus with the finish.
Boy, tell you what, he's had a pretty good first half. He has been all over that glass. South Carolina making a little move here. They push it out to a five-point lead. South Carolina once trailed by eight. Now they've got their biggest lead at five. As Frank Martin works in the home huddle. And gives us a chance to take a look at our Toyota trivia question. South Carolina is 20 and 1 all time versus current MEAC schools. Who did they lose to? Oh, that's a good one. Carolina State jumped out to that early lead. Gamecock defense is turned up. Just as I say that, Myers with a penetration. And he's called for the offensive foul. Good off-help defense that time. When you're going down the lane, you got to come from the other side. Nicely done by Eric Smith to get in position to take that player control foul. seen about every defense that the Bulldogs have but not in a rhythm yet in the half court but they took their time and Smith with a nice penetration Eric Smith not known much for scoring more for his delivery of the basketball from that point guard position but nice maneuver using the left hand off the glass you like to have point guards that can score too Toons was a good move how about that oh. Nice feed from Smith, and Jackson will go to the line. Boy, Smith does a nice job of distributing the basketball. Watch Toons take the ball. He finds the opening, a little gap in there. Reverses it and goes underneath and goes up on the glass. Carolina State's guards play pretty well. I think the one thing they do do well is put the ball on the deck and take it straight to the basket. There's that free throw. Substitutions. Henry in there for the Bulldogs. Philip Henry, 6'1", 170, freshman from Manning, South Carolina. Adams off the Jackson miss. Boy, just got out of control. Tony Green taking a long look. Could have easily been a travel there, but they call a block. Louis Adams taking the ball down into the lane again. And one thing South Carolina State's guards are doing a lot in this particular affair is the dribbling the ball into the lane against the South Carolina defense. Louis Adams. 61170 from Dakar, Senegal. Via Brevard Community College. South Carolina State continues to hang around. Back to, this, back to the zone again for South Carolina State. Good first half for the Bulldogs. Mm -hmm. They played very well. Got that confidence builder coming out of the gate. They got the lead. South Carolina's put some pressure on them, but they've withstood it so far. Leonard. Oh, that's nice. That's nice. Leonard not known for his three-point shooting. Looked awfully good on that shot. Only 30% from outside the arc is Leonard on the season. But both of his baskets this afternoon have been trays. Linton can't answer. And Jackson with a great finish off the 
diagonal pass. Coppin State in the NCAA tournament. I do remember that. If memory serves me correct, I think South Carolina was either a two or a three seed. That's right. Radovich. Coach Eddie Vogler was uh, the head coach here then. And he was a two seed, two against a 15. Nice drive. There's Leonard again. Good first half he's having. Sophomore from Greenville now has eight. There's a 15 second differential between the game clock and the shot clock. North Carolina State still has not hit a three. Boy, Radovich has played well too. Right now, South Carolina State keeping it respectable. Eric Smith taking a look at his head coach, Frank Martin, to see what he wants to do. He's got to go. Oh, and was that one on the rim? There's no signal. Mike Thibodeau said it came off the rim. And no surprise that Kai Chinnis was there for the stick back. Let's go back and take a look at it again. Tim Carter disagrees totally with this call. On the rim, coming back. Hard to tell from that angle. Looked like that one was still there to me. Yeah. But we have the benefit of a high-definition replay. And Frank Martin has the benefit of a big first half from Kai Chinnis. South Carolina State off to a good start. But the Gamecocks have good balance scoring on both sides of the court. South Carolina State just got off to a really good start. But uh, again, you've got this undermanned South Carolina team. you got to give them credit for coming back. And uh, they really hit the glass, Larry, in the first 20 minutes. Well, they had 23 rebounds in their first half. And 11 of them were offensive rebounds. King Jackson with an awfully good first half to go over those eight points. He had six rebounds. Kachinas also with a good first half with four points. He had seven rebounds, four of them offensive. Got the clock ready to go, and South Carolina to inbound. As we get the second half underway. Smith, Richardson, Jackson, Kachinis, and Leonard in there for South Carolina. Nice drive by Richardson. There's a number of times uh, this afternoon the South Carolina and South Carolina State guards have been able to dribble against the defenses they're facing and get it inside. Booms with a quick shot, and what a pretty stick back on the tap by Hezekiah. Well, the more I see him, the more I like him, Larry. Ten points now, the leading oh, yeah. score. Nice maneuver inside that time. Again, Lakeith Jackson doing a terrific job. He's now tied for the leading scoring position. Ten for him. Richardson deflected it out of bounds. Slauson quickly comes in. Kyten is quickly to the bench. <laughs> and did you see how quickly he went by his head coach? <laughs> as far away as he could. Oh, a shot inside. Tough maneuver in there. Patrick Myers. High off the glass. A lot of offense in the opening moments of the second half. Another offensive rebound for Carolina. And a nice defensive play at the other end by Louis Adams. Good ball reversal. 
reversal that time by South Carolina. Platoon's got himself in real hot water that time on that baseline. He drove right into the South Carolina defense, the te teeth of it. And you know, there, there are a lot of things that Frank Martin would like to see his team do better. But the way they aggressively go at the offensive glass, I, I don't think he's got a complaint one about that. Two things happened on that play right there. Eric Smith's a good defensive job, trailing all the way down to the lane, and a good block, too, keeping the ball away from the basket. Right nice decision by Richardson. Tim Carter takes a timeout. 13 offensive rebounds. Rest up or whatever. How you been? Congratulations. Thank you. I've been doing good. What's it been like for you the, this whole last year? Not only have you had a coaching change here in basketball, all the excitement of football, you still got to take care of things in the classroom. It has been a busy time for you. You know, it's just been a great time being here at Carolina. You know, winning, you know, I like to win. So, you know, beating Michigan was a great win. And just in the game winning, you know, it was very exciting. And I'm just happy to get back out in the basketball court. Bruce, you've been an integral part of this basketball team for the last couple of years. I know you're anxious to get back out there. You've already played four games, took a couple, couple of games off, obviously lead to go play in the bowl game I get a question for you when you're coming out to practice in basketball are there different muscles that get sore when you're doing football practice versus basketball practice no um, you know basketball practice is, is a different conditioning than football you know you do a lot more running so I say my legs get a little bit more sore than football practice than basketball practice mm -hmm. you know Bruce uh, so many kids now I mean we get kids that are like 12 and 13 and coaches are saying you got to pick one sport to play I mean I think it's really neat that at this level you got two guys like uh, like Coach Martin and Coach Spurrier that are able to let you work this out. Yes, sir. You know, it, uh, all my life people told me I can't do something. So, you know, they told me I can't play basketball, I can't play football at D1 College. And, you know, I try to prove them wrong. And, you know, God gave me the ability to do it. So I'm just happy to be at Carolina doing it. I know when you came out of high school, you were proficient in both sports when you were in high school, and you came to South Carolina to play both sports. And you had the opportunity. I thought last year you had an outstanding year last year. You played really well, and you're ready to get back into the saddle again here pretty soon, aren't you? I mean, full bore. Yes, sir. I, uh, I come out and start practicing. Me and Coach uh, Martin will talk about it today after this game, and we'll talk about what time I come out. You get back just in time for SEC. Uh, Wars, huh? Yes, sir. <laughs> Bruce, I, I would have to think that uh, uh, with Coach Martin's style, it's just like being out on the football field. You know, the way he goes at it, you think you're in the huddle, don't you? Yeah, you know, Coach Martin, he's an aggressive coach, and you know, he got a lot of, a lot of, he like, he likes to go hard. You know, you look at him right now, you look at his face, you know, he looks scary, but you know, he just, like, <laughs> he just likes to win. <laughs> yeah, you understand that, though. I mean, he, I talked to him about it the other day. You know, the fact that that you two you know, we're able to get each other real quickly. Yes, sir. You know, um, you know, during football season, you know, I came over to the office and, you know, did a couple of, you know, conferences with him and talked to him. You know, we had a great time. What's been the most difficult thing uh, about going back and forth between the two sports groups? Um, I wouldn't say nothing difficult because both of the, you know, coaches work with you. Coach Martin, you know, when, I'm, when I got to do football, he let me do football. And Coach Fred, when I got to do basketball, he let me do basketball. So oftentimes when, when you're making that transition, going from football to basketball, and then back to football again, and now back to basketball. I mean, you've had a little bit of time off here at, with the bowl situation, and I know uh, you still just did win. You know, they came out to practice every day and work hard, so it's no different. You know, they, they win it now, and you got to keep it going. Tim Carter has gotten hit with a technical foul over on the South Carolina State bench. I believe Tony Green teed him up. And you can see he's not real happy about it. The thing that's got to make you excited as well, Bruce, is you come off the great experience uh, in the bowl game, and then even though you've gone through this coaching transition on the basketball side, the way things have gone in the league in the preseason portion, I mean, it looks like it's as balanced top to bottom as it has been in a long time. You know, you know, you know the team, you know, this year, you know, we just got to come out, you know, just play with each other and, and just work hard together, and, you know, come out and try to win. One of the things, uh, having played basketball many years ago, we always had a certain team that we really struggled with. Is there a team that when you were playing the last couple of years that South Carolina just really struggled with? Um, the, te the team I would say is, you know, Kentucky. You know, ever since I've been here, I haven't beaten them yet. You know, that's what I want to do. And it is a great team. The, the whole SEC is tough, you know. It's, it's a big lead, and, you know, we got to come out every day and, and just try to win.
Offensive foul. Bruce, listen, uh, we appreciate you taking time to come by and talk with us, but hopefully this is the last time we're talking to you until it's like after a game-winning shot or yes, something, sir. all right? Yes, sir. Stay healthy. Best of luck this right, year. Thanks. Back with more right after this. With Tony Green, who is the guy that uh, slapped him with that technical. I'm sure they got it worked out. Probably not to uh, the favor of Coach Carter. Well, at least he's still here. <laughs> South Carolina back on the attack. Surprise, surprise. Kaichinus with an offensive rebound. Kaichinus has been unbelievable in this game. I've talked about the offensive rebound. The South Carolina had 11 offensive and 12 defensive rebounds at the half. Kaichinus was leading the way in that category and still is. Kaichinus has now got eight rebounds, Larry. And in terms of that rebounding, five of those are offensive, three defensive. South Carolina now has 16 defensive rebounds and 14 offensive rebounds. And I'll go back to what I was talking about is one of our keys to the game was the fact that South Carolina needed to continue to hit that glass. This is not a very big basketball team. I mean, they don't have any 6'10", 6'11 guys floating around out there that play a lot. They've got a lot of very active players down inside that are awfully good rebounders. Palmer out in the passing lane. And he got it back and got the bucket. Oh, a nice job that time by Toombs, too. Khalif Toombs just dropped a beautiful pass down in there to allow Palmer to make that jump shot. Kaichinus with a nice feed that was just a little too far for Jackson to get out from underneath the rim. Yeah. I'm telling you, as a guy, I don't like this kid. I, I don't know if you can be smooth in 6'11", but he is smooth. That's an excellent adjective. You know, I, I mean, he's one of those guys, he's just not overly aggressive. He doesn't pound on you, doesn't really attack the rebounds, just simply catches the ball. He's got great hands. I've noticed that today, that when he receives a pass, he doesn't lose it very often. He gets it and does something with it. He's got a terrific shot. Switching defense is almost on every possession in the first half. South Carolina State now looking at this deficit, which once was double digits, now going man to man almost every possession. And Jackson just muscled that one in over Hezekiah. Keen Jackson right here in the paint area with a nice drive right down the lane on the right side there, just short of the block. Up and off of the glass. Got a lot of arc on that ball. Just simply at the bottom part of the square and went right into the net. He's going to take a break right now, heading for the bench. <laughs> I'm really struck by these South Carolina guys. When they go to the bench, they go to the far end of the bench. They don't go to the table and then make a left. They make a diagonal toward the end of the bench opposite Frank Barton. Nice pass by Palmer. And Hezekiah now with 10 points and five rebounds in the second half. He's got 16 and seven for the game. Check that, 18 and seven. Big second half from Matthew Hezekiah. I said they had to turn him loose today. Well, they did. Averaging 12 and a half a game and eight rebounds. And so far, 18 points and seven boards. sequence for South Carolina State. Well, Adams with a nice job of blocking that ball and running out and making a nice catch to finish it. 
two outstanding plays. Usually you don't get a block that far from the basket. Nice finish by Richardson. How many times today have we seen South Carolina dribble the ball, dribble penetration into the lane and get the ball up in the glass and in the net? And Adams going to the basket will draw the foul. Larry, how about our Regions Bank play of the game that we just saw? Terrific job. And, of course, Brenton Williams with the pass after Adams had made the block and the run out in the basket. Nicely done. Brenton Williams with a good pass. Number 33, Luka Radovich. Checking back in for South Carolina State. Richardson goes to the South Carolina bench. Now Patrick Myers checking in for the Bulldogs. Adams goes out. Adams with eight points. Even Tim Carter knives lift off the Bulldog bench. South Carolina State keeps hanging around, don't they? Hard to shake these guys. They've gotten a lot of experience in what you talked about, those money games that they've played so far this year. And I think they are a dramatically improved team from the one that had a lot of trouble in the MEAC last season. Did not win a single conference game last year. Wow. Guy Chinnis wide open and couldn't finish. Go to the line. Gamecocks trying to pull away, but the Bulldogs hanging around. One of the best stats in all of basketball. We, we have failed to mention that Kai Chinnis from uh, Klaipeda, Lithuania, came to South Carolina. Frank Martin was uh, familiar with him when he played at the Word of Life Fire Traditional School. By the time you get that out, there are two scores already. Reigning SEC Freshman of the Week. 13 points, three rebounds, an assist and a block in 25 minutes last week versus Presbyterian. Good pass by Smith. That was beautiful. Nicely done. Eric Smith leads his team in assists. He averages four a game. Now, can you imagine uh, this South Carolina backcourt? When you get somebody that can distribute the ball like Smith, and then you get Ellington out there? Yeah, they're going to have a really good group of guards out there. And again, nice play down inside, a good catch, and a good finish down in there. Well, Smith did a good job of getting that ball to R.J. Slauson. You get Kaichinus out there playing with Carrera when he's back healthy. Nice ball movement by the Bulldogs. Radovich really short armed that shot. Look at Smith go. One of the things about Eric Smith, he's, he's always got the motor revving, okay? It's not just five miles an hour, it's 100 miles an hour from the time he's got the ball or whether he doesn't have the ball. It's a very quick young man up and down the floor. He distributes the ball extremely well. He needs to control it occasionally. His turnovers are a little bit high, but again, as I said, he leads his club in assists. In fact, he ranks sixth in the conference in that category. He's had nine assists on two different occasions this year. Officially five on this afternoon. Dedrick Taylor underneath the basket didn't see it. And he asked for some help from Mike Thibodeau out top. Thibodeau said it went off the Gamecocks and South Carolina State inbounds. Nice bounce pass there. Good touch of the basket. 
Once you get the ball down inside like that, Shaquille Mitchell with a nice catch, and I guess you made the pass. Hezekiah showing a little bit more of his versatility. Shaquille Mitchell gets the first. Carolina State now 12 of 16 from the free throw line. South Carolina only 6 of 14. And that's a number that could haunt them in league play. Yeah, it could very well. I guess it's all about getting the right guy there because, like we said, they came in to this game third in the conference in free throw shooting at 71%. Nice rebound by Radovich. Richardson and Jackson are the two deficient players at the charity strike. Both of those guys need to pick it up. Pretty good defensive work that time by R.J. Slauson on Hezekiah. Oh, what a spin. Leonard couldn't finish, but he stayed with it. And Slauson with a finish. South Carolina really beginning to balance that scoring out. They've got a number of guys that have uh, scored. I think everybody that has played has scored. South Carolina State has still not hit a three-pointer. Radovich battling. Good effort by the Bulldogs that time to keep it alive. They tipped it around a couple of times. Radovich and uh, Hezekiah both got their hands on it, but they couldn't get a basket, so they start again. Their execution has not always been crisp, but I would have to think that Tim Carter is well pleased with the effort on the part of his Bulldogs. South Carolina State has got to do, though, is work on the old assist-turnover ratio. They have got 11 assists, and they have turned it over 12 times this afternoon. Approaching nine minutes to play here at the Colonial Life Arena. Baker Larry Conley. Leonard with a shot clock at six. Pretty good hustle play on the part of both teams down there in that corner in front of the South Carolina State bench. These guys have played hard. A lot of South Carolina natives between these two teams, no doubt. Played against each other in high school, know of each other. Campuses are really not that far apart. Orangeburg, South Carolina, approximately, what, 35, 40 miles south like of that. here? Yeah. Nice feed. There's a Kaya with another basket. Tim Carter, those are the kind of plays your guys have got to convert. Despite that, the Bulldogs still only down by six. Matthew Hezekiah trying to keep his team in it in Columbia. 
numbers at 17 points per game, fifth in the SEC. How about Marshall Henderson at Ole Miss? Yeah, he's averaging 18 points a game, but he has attempted 133 point field goals already. That's getting them up. Oh, yeah. In Florida at 9 and 2, we thought they were going to be pretty good. They are only allowing 52 points per game. 20 points of scoring margin. I'll tell you the other club is Texas A&M. How about Elston Turner? Ring a bell with you, huh? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. His dad played at Ole Miss, and he's leading that squad right now in scoring. We saw them. Might have been on the first weekend of the regular season. He was, and he played well, and has continued. Lawson got caught up in the air. I watched Henderson play the other day, and Ole Miss was playing over the tournament in Hawaii. Right. I'm going to tell you what, he has no problem releasing that ball from beyond the arc at any time. He is going to be fun to watch during the conference season this year for Ole Miss. How about Pressy the other day? Ninth oh, assist. Gosh. He is fun to watch. Got it to go. The one thing people are going to try to do against the South Carolina team, though, is they are challenged getting back on defense and transition, at least right now. I would agree with that, Dave. Fires is wide open. You've got to be very careful when you go and help on defense if you've got somebody to cover up for a nice move. But on the other end of that coin, once it goes through the basket, the Gamecocks under Frank Martin push it and push it quickly. Nicely done, and again, Brenton Williams, the junior, pushing it down the floor. Kind of got underneath the basket a little too far and had to lean back. Chance for an old-fashioned three-point play here. Brenton Williams, our Motel 6 sixth man of the game. See the 11 points and the two steals looking to add to that total. talking about Henderson shooting three-point field goals a few minutes ago. I'll tell you, Brendan Williams can shoot the three-point field goal. He's got a higher percentage. He just taken, hasn't taken nearly as many. Palmer called for the travel. With all the innovations we put into the college game, I think probably the shot clock and the three-point field goal have done more to advance this game than anything. Would you agree with that? Yeah, absolutely. Changed it totally. And Ryan Richardson able to come off the curl and get his first three. South Carolina, 4 of 15 from outside the arc. South Carolina State does not have a three-pointer. And I don't know whether it was a shot selection or what, but Frank Martin is up in front of the Carolina bench, and he is waiting for somebody who is subbing out. And this, this player is not going to be able to get past him. He's going to throw up the drawbridge. Oh, he got by him. Frank had that look. You see his assistant coaches, too, that kind of knew what was coming, and there's the stare. Every time the South Carolina makes a run, they got it down within six points just a few moments ago. Gamecocks come right back with a little push and edge it out a little bit more. Mm -hmm. You know, you and I were talking about this at the top of the show, the fact, and I, I don't mind saying it, I think this is the most wide-open Southeastern Conference season I have ever seen. I mean, there are any one of 10, maybe even 11 teams that could win the championship for the season. And, of course, in the SEC, the champion is the season winner, not the tournament winner. Correct. The tournament winner only goes to the NCAA tournament. Of course, that tournament this year down in Nashville. By Chinnis. 
Eight points now to go along with 10 rebounds. As he's looking to ring up a double-double. Hezekiah has already done that for South Carolina State. 20 points and 12 boards. Lakeem Jackson threatening as well. 14 points and seven rebounds. Damian Leonard, eight points and seven boards. They have a bunch of double-doubles today. A little double-double party. Nice, nicely done. Tombs, long range. They list him at 5'9 out of Atlantic City. Four-year starter, team captain. And once again, South Carolina is able to dribble, penetrate deep into the lane and get a layup or a close shot. Bulldogs are not being able to keep him out of there. And Myers gets free on the back door. I look, I have to look at the shot chart after this game is over with. I'm going to bet you the 70% of the shots that are made here in this game are all within about six feet of the basket. Probably so. Like we said, South Carolina State does not have a three-pointer. South Carolina only with four. And just as we look at it, yeah, that's what I was thinking. Tim Carter calls a timeout. South Carolina State really looking winded. They ought to be right now. Of those four teams, I think Ole Miss really would be in advance and probably the fourth best team or third best team right now in that league. Tennessee missing Maimon. I mean, not having him in the lineup has been a big loss. No question. Preseason, first team all SEC, and he's just a guy. He, he was my favorite player coming into this season. I was really looking forward to seeing him. Palmer with a good move. Nice turnaround. And they've got to be getting to the point with Maimon. And I know that when we were on hand in Knoxville, Alonzo Martin's going to make a decision. Yeah, they were talking about having that discussion with Maven and his parents about what they do. He's a medical red shirt. Hold him out and have him come back next year. Or try to get him in shape and get him ready for February and March. I, it's a tough decision. That's like Conzo told us. You know, he's such a high-energy guy that for him to play at his best, you got to give him two or three weeks to get into shape. Two of two from the free throw line. He's got 10 points to go along with seven boards, but he is three of 14 from the field. Under four minutes to go. Wow, what a pass. Hezekiah had it for a second, but then lost it off of his foot. South Carolina, 354 away from reaching the double. Guys returning, and they went back and looked, and Lakeem Jackson, he's left-handed, but they determined after looking at all the made field goals he had, 80% of the shots that he made in the paint, he did with his right hand. It was not his left hand, but he finishes with his right hand, and he's a natural left-hander. So what did they determine from that? Well, he just figured, well, he's going to do it with his right hand when he gets close, and he's left-handed the rest of the time. And that's kind of the process. That gives you an idea just how detail-oriented Frank Martin is in terms of wanting to know about this lineup. Jackson and Hezekiah are Regents Bank players of the game. And if you're wondering, there was 296 made field goals that they edited. I would hate to have been the video coordinator for that. It's computer generated. He probably I know, just I know. just pushed the button. Punched in the numbers. Yep. Palmer couldn't get it to go. Boy, 
right. Man. Trying to get out of here a little early. Clock still running. Wow. Well, they finally turned it off. There must have been eight or nine seconds go off of that clock. Yeah, now Tony Green's over at the table. I know I've seen that in some Saturday morning leagues where you go for that continuous clock. But. And you wanted to. <laughs> yeah, they got to determine just exactly how many seconds did go off the clock. Let's go back and take a look. There's the foul right there. Just put it back at 301. 301. That's easy enough to do. I just there it is. They're back. Yeah, 301. There you go. Well, this has been a good tune-up for South Carolina. Absolutely. To, to get ready to go into Southeastern Conference play next week. South Carolina is at Mississippi State on Wednesday night. Georgia's at Florida. Ole Miss travels to Tennessee. Arkansas is at Texas A&M and LSU's at Auburn. Kentucky opens up play on Thursday night at Vanderbilt. Oh, what a tip. How about that tip in? Oh, my goodness. Matthew Hezekiah fully extended to reach around and tap that ball into the basket. 22 points and 13 rebounds. Watch this reach. And there you take a look at a couple of our O'Charlie's fans of the game. Had a lot to cheer about here in Columbia over the last week or so. Carolina will have Bruce Ellington back on Wednesday night. Frank Martin said that the doctors were going to go through a pretty extensive examination of Carrera on Monday. He could be back as well. Yeah, he's got that chronic hip injury. I was asking him about it today before the game, and he said he's ready to come back. I asked him if he had much pain with it right now. He says, yeah, but he says, well, I'm ready to come back. He says, I've rested and feel like I'm ready to get out there. I tell you what, that's two key players for them to have back there. Absolutely. And Adams, foul on the play as you take a look at Carrera. Ten points a game, 48% field goals, but more importantly, are those seven, almost seven and a half rebounds per game. And again, not a very tall player, only 6'5", but just a guy that battles underneath. And then if you're just joining us, Lachey Page, who was the second leading scorer on this club, yesterday it was announced that he'd be out, would not play this year because of an academic issue that they had been investigating. It caused him to miss the two previous games. And some finality on that situation, certainly not the way that Frank Martin wanted it to turn out yesterday. And so now he's got to go back and get to work and redo rotations and everything right as they start conference play. Oh, got the block. Philip Henry came out of there with it. Well, that's a good rebound that time by Lakeem Jackson. It's Jackson's eighth. Here's the game costs going to start to slow it down. They're going to pull it back out, run some clock. Why not? talking earlier about the fact that South Carolina is at Mississippi State to open the conference season, but right behind that, Auburn comes in here, and then the Gamecocks go to LSU, and they've got Bandy here, and then they go to Missouri. South Carolina certainly with a chance to get its feet underneath it, but as balanced as this league is. I'm going to tell you something. I'm not going to be surprised by any score I see in really? the SEC this year. Any score. Well, the two teams that I think are clearly in a rebuilding mode, and there's no knock or anything, but Vandy, after losing 
so many great fifth-year seniors, which is so rare in this day and age of college basketball. And then, you know, the rebuilding that's going on down at Mississippi State. Mm -hmm. I would agree with that. And I think most people within the league are still uh, watching Kentucky to see yep. if those first-year players are going to come together. They have lost four games so far. John Calipari's put heart monitors on it. Had to give the Bulldogs a lot of credit today. I thought they played a pretty good basketball game. I agree. Game. The first 14 to 15 minutes in the first half uh, kind of helped them with some confidence. And they kind of held on right now. Here they come down again. Turnover. That hurts. Want to talk about rebuilding, Larry? A lot of teams in the SEC they're trying to get back on track. Could have used a guy like Matthew Hezekiah. You know, a lot of people, and I know the folks around here that follow the South Carolina Gamecocks, know that Malik Cook, who averaged 12 points That's last right. year, is gone. He's he graduated, but they lost two key players: a number three scorer, Anthony Gill, who transferred to Virginia. And of course, Harris, seven points and five rebounds, transferred to Florida. Good point. Montre Harris, I thought, was a really going to be an outstanding player. Still will be if he's playing down there in Florida. Billy Donovan, another good team. So South Carolina State will fall to five and ten overall as they look to get going again in the meet. And after falling behind by eight early, South Carolina comes back to ring one up at home. The Gamecocks with their 10th non-conference win this season.